Today I'm here with quantum critical metals that has something we're all talking about, but nobody seems to have, and that's gallium. How are you today, Marcy? And please tell us about your gallium. Well, good afternoon, Tracy. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, we have gallium on not one project, but two projects. Both are based in James Bay in Northern Quebec. Uh, they are both road accessible along the route north. Uh, one, both of them have been discovered by accident, the way all good stories are. <laughs> we, uh, our NMX East is next door to the Wabuchi mine. It's a lithium mine, and it's also on strike with, uh, Polymetallic, the NISC project and the lion and the tiger, all their ones they have at Polymetallic or, or Power Metallic, sorry. So it's an interesting area with both pe pegmatite potential and a lot of other goodies. And what we were up there looking for lithium and ended up drilling and found more than just lithium. We found cesium, rubidium, and the lovely gallium. So that cool. one we have 107 meters of consecutive gallium in one of our drill holes. It's open at depth and open all directions. And so that one is going to be uh, all of our drill core, we're taking some samples of that and it's going to be crushed and it's being sent to three different labs. Uh, two are going to be done here in Canada and one down into the U.S. And we are going to be working on the processing and the recovery and getting the uh, metallurgical stuff done on it. And that's one project. Then you travel down the road south about three hours. We have our second gallium uh, discovery accidentally on our project looking for gold and ended up intersecting 150 meters of pegmatite. Um, so then we had stopped the hole because <laughs> we were looking for gold. And then we've got four holes with intersections on that property with the longest one being 150 meters of consecutive gallium. And same things going for that. We're going to be taking the drill core from that project as well. And it's going to be getting uh, pulverized and sent to three different labs for um, work on the metallurgy and working on getting the um, gallium out of the rocks. And of course, everyone who attended the investor talk today was talking about your stock movement and, of course, the accompanying news that happened with Paul Power Metallic. Would you like to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, there was a news release from uh, Power Metallic that went out on Monday, that would be June the 9th, I believe, where they announced that they had acquired 167 square kilometers of Lyft, which is a company that is adjacent and tagged on to our claims on three sides. So they are up to the north of us, the west of us and the south of us, um, and a bunch of other claims that are all in the vicinity. And um, so people were interested on that because uh, I believe Terry had said in the news that a new polymetallic district with considerable potential for additional deposits was how he had worded it. And we just happened to be a long strike on the northern margin of the basin that they're speaking of in the news. So that got some telephone calls coming my way because we just happened to be right there. And so we put out uh, a follow-up news uh, yesterday, June 10th, which speaks about our position in the district and uh, just put out the map with the geology and where the zones are going through. So just so everybody had an idea what was going on, because we had some shareholders who knew about our uh, positioning and some that didn't. So we thought it would be fair to put out the news so then everybody is aware of what's going on. And that has led to an uh, increase in our volume and share price. Um, nothing's changed on our end. We've had the property since 2010, but Terry's been busy at uh, Power Metallic, which is great for us. And of course, I, Quantum, I'm new to quantum critical metals. I was very impressed with your geologist that was at the Critical Minerals Institute Summit. And uh, I was going through your website. There's 10 different projects. You have a, a wide spectrum of the critical minerals. Of those 10 projects, can you uh, highlight your top priorities at this time? Um, for sure. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to secure North America's supply of 
the next generation of critical minerals. So therefore, we're going to be focusing mostly on our Quebec projects, which is the gallium. Um, the two projects are going to be spending the majority of our time this year. Uh, we've got a great crew. We've got people who are PhDs and PhD candidates that are going to be writing papers on this. It's pretty exciting for them because nobody's been able to do this before. It has a, all the processing and everything that's going on on that front is new and very exciting for all of the scientific and also for the supply chain. And um, that's where we're going to be focusing. We want to be the leading team to secure all of this and figure out how we can get this processing sorted as efficiently and uh, cost effectively as we can. I must admit, your website was phenomenal for pictures, for instance. I tell companies this all the time, have some pictures so we can see what you're looking at. The pictures were fantastic. Can you also, the photography was outstanding. Can you tell us a little bit more about, say, you want to become a shareholder and you do your due diligence, et cetera. What should shareholders be looking forward to in this next quarter? Wow. Well, we're going to have a lot of news coming out because we have been so busy, especially since coming back to the Critical Metals uh, Institute conference. We've made a lot of great connections there and we've been really busy working, like I said, mostly on the processing and on the end users. We're trying to find buyers for our product before we even have it ready to go. Uh, we have literally hit the ground running um, and we're going to have a lot of news coming out. Can't tell you all the news that's going to be coming out, but it's going to be a lot of a lot of rare earth and critical mineral news. <laughs> so you heard it here first. We've got gallium, rare earths. You want to list the rest of them? I heard cesium. Yeah, rubidium. We got a lot of rubidium as well. So it's going to be it's going to be a great year. We're super excited. Our timing um, has been great this year. You know how. Some people are lucky and win the lottery once, and then there's others who are extra lucky and win it twice and three times. We have just been, uh, every stone we've been turning over recently has just been coming up roses. So we're very excited for 2025. But that's not just luck. That's a great opportunity for you to introduce our audience to the fact that you've partnered with an AI technology to help you identify these critical minerals. It seems to be working for you. Yes, definitely helpful. It saves us a lot of time and a lot of money. We're juniors and we're a very small team and I'm very, very efficient with our funds. And uh, I don't like to spend any money if I don't have to. <laughs> Might be a little bit of my Scottish background. Um, so yeah, we have partnered with uh, um, an AI group on a few of our projects and we're working and collaborating with them on how we can most expediently and efficiently uh, work and explore the projects without wasting a lot of time and money. Uh, an example, we have just uh, one of the projects, we have a nice uh, prospective copper project next to a copper discovery in Northern British Columbia. And this winter we were um, feeding their a AI and um, getting the machine running for getting our project down to probably maybe a fifth of the size where we're going to be exploring of the project to save us from going and exploring everywhere. And we've been able to streamline things and get things going in the winter when normally we wouldn't be able to do anything. It's saved us a lot of time and money. So now we're just basically going to be going and beelining straight to the places where have the highest probability of success. And they also happen to be the areas that are closest to the discovery next door, which is, is interesting, but, um, we're going to also be doing the same similar type. Uh, we started working on that with our NMX East. Um, they'll be helping us to de-risk uh, the polymetallic portion and also the pegmatites and the gallium. And then we'll be moving on to our discovery project, which is the other gallium play and doing the same thing just project by project. Well, it sounds exceptional. Marcy, thank you so much for joining us today. And for everybody out there interested in finding out more about quantum critical metals, please go to the following website. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tracy.